What's up, Bear Nation? It's Bear. I get a lot of questions, and I've gotten a lot lately, regarding uh, body armor. When should I take body armor? When shouldn't I take body armor? This is a pretty personal decision, uh, and everybody has their own parameters for this. So I'm just going to answer this for me, my personal experience, my preferences, um, <laughs> my kind of do's and don'ts. And then maybe you can take this and apply it to your situation. Um, for me, it all comes back to what is the mission, right? What's the mission statement? What are we doing? Um, the why is usually pretty squared away, right? It's because it's got to do the things. Copy. Well, what things are we doing? I have some pretty hard and fast SOPs in my life these days. Um, a plate carrier is in my vehicle pretty much always when I'm just running around town. If I am within a day's walk of my homestead, um, which is, you know, when we go to the little towns around here and go out and do the things, there's a plate carrier in my truck. The reason for that is this on the back. See that? There is a day pack, the uh, Condor HCB2 Hotel Charlie Bravo Dose. Um, which I've discussed at length at this channel. Uh, you can just search Bear Independent Plate Carrier if you want a deeper dive into how I set up my plate carriers. But because that day pack is mollied onto the back of here, I've got my cover combustion cordage container, um, uh, you know, cutting tool. I've got compass, I've got combat, I've got calories, I've got casualty care. I've got all the things that I need as a standalone unit on this right now for 24 hours, you know, without much of an issue. I've got spare socks back there. I've got all the things. And I go deeper into that in, in that plate carrier video. So as a standalone unit for 24 hours, this is kind of my go-to. Um, I like it that way. It's, I don't have to think. I just grab the plate carrier. I'm good to go. Now, because it's built out as a 24-hour system, I can go post watch over there, and I'm good. I've got water in my water bladder. I've, I've got, you know, calories. I've got cover. Uh, you know, there's a poncho in here and um, dress for the weather, and you'll be good to go, right? I've got my things. I've got a headlamp, all the blah, blah, blahs. So if we got to go pull security or go patrol or walk home from the office to the homestead, cool, throw the plate carrier on, let's go for a walk, right? Um, and it's really, miles-wise, about a half a day's walk in any direction where the places that I would normally go in this area, half a day's walk. Um, I've got another 12 hours of cushion on me so that's kind of how i use the plate carrier or if i know that i'm going in to be into a situation where there's a high probability that rounds fly for example when i was commuting in and out of dallas every day the last place i want to be without body armor is on the dallas north tollway on a friday afternoon after the balloon has gone up because lots of people have weapons lots of people are pissed off and while I'm not looking to start a fight with anybody, if I find myself in the middle of one, having armor is a good thing. So if the environmental factors dictate that body armor should be used, then I will have it and use it. But I go out of my way to not put myself in situations where the envi environmental factors would dictate that we wear body armor as an SOP. Um, and that's just a matter of being mindful of your geography and the human terrain. So... There's that. Uh, that's when I'm going to be looking to have a plate carrier on. The main reason why it's not 24-7, 365 for me is weight. Most people really overestimate how much they can carry and for how far and for how long. So this plate carrier as shown right now, I think it's 34 pounds, um, 
with, you know, eight mags, blowout kit, radio, three liters of water, pistol mags, uh, douche pouch, um, TQ, and then day pack on the back. So when you add all that up, uh, there's, you know, 34 pounds is 34 pounds. By contrast, this chest rig, which has all the same capabilities, minus the armor, I mean, it's literally the same capabilities. Same, you know, blowout kit, spare additional tourniquet, um, sustainment pouch, cover, radio, fixed blade knife, blah, blah, blah. And in fact, somebody recently said, Bear, I miss your Rat 3. Where is it? Right there on the plate carrier. I love it when people accuse me of not doing the things. I'm like, this is my, was my EDC knife. I do the things. But, uh, yeah, it's now with the chest rig. Maps, compass, blah, blah, blah. All, all in there. And I believe that weighs 22 pounds. So do the math, right? We've added at least 12 pounds just by taking the armor. So that's a gallon and a half of water or, you know, three days worth of food or whatever. So it's, it's a considerable difference. So what I'm really been doing lately is if I'm within 24 hours walking distance of home, it's the plate carrier and I'm good to go. If I'm gonna be farther than that, then my rucksack, which is this guy here, will be in the truck. And I'll take the rucksack and the war belt. And that gives me a good amount of capability. Um, I've got, let's see, one, two, five liters of water carrying capability. Plus there's two one liter smart water bottles in there. So that's seven liters. I've got spare mags. I've got a very large Ontario Knife Company Artac 2. Uh, again, do the things, as you can see, it's been used. Um, but this is my hand axe for making shelter or slaying grizzly bears or whatever. But I've got this large pack that has at a minimum 70, at a minimum 72 hours of capability on it. And frankly, I generally have it set up to go for about 10 days to two weeks. So if I had to walk, if I'm 200 miles from home, let's say I can get 15 miles in a day. Um, I mean, as far as just marching, I can do better than that, but maybe there's environmental factors that I can only get 15 miles a day, or uh, I had to work 30 miles to make 15 miles worth of progress, blah, blah, blah. You know, a couple of weeks, I'm home. So that's the idea behind this bag. And I'll run that with the war belt so that I have some capability. I've got my blowout kit on my war belt. I've got an E&E &E kit with a compass and maps and emergency blanket and all of that. I've got a sleep kit in here, poncho, blah, 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 blah. But this ruck runs anywhere between 45 and 60 pounds, depending on the season. That war belt's about 15 pounds. So let's just say war belt and three seasons set up on the ruck where I don't have a super high insulative factor sleep system with me, we're now at 60 pounds. Most of y'all, and I, I just know this because I've met a lot of you, I've met a lot of people, most of y'all have not carried a 60 pound load for any great distance, for any great length of time recently. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I ruck. A, it's because I was a fatty, fat, fatty, fat, 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 and uh, needed to get some exercise in, so I started a rucking regimen again. And B, what better way to actually use your things than to go walk around with them five, six days a week? Uh, which is one of the reasons I tell y'all, go put your stuff on and do the things, because you're gonna find the, the hot spots and the sore things, and well, when I wear this thing with this thing, this buckle rubs this thing and that hurts, and oh, I gotta actually move this thing off of my plate carrier so that I can present my sidearm and use it without getting an interference here and blah, 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 okay? So, 
for me, the armor versus no armor. If I'm going long distances, I'm gonna not take armor. The reason for that is simply weight. Um, unless I feel like the environmental factors are going to cause me to need armor. But I'm very much so in the neighborhood of avoid the, avoid the fight at all costs unless it comes to you, in which case finish it quickly and judiciously. That's, you know, but what if you can't, Bear? Well, then so be it. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Um, and so, and then this gets into the concept of line gear. Depending on what I'm doing and where I'm doing it, if you have the war belt, that's your line one, or without the war belt, for example, right now I have a plate carrier on in my EDC, my EDC being my line one, okay? Then your line two is your plate carrier or your chest rig. Um, and then line three is gonna be your ruck, like this. Or maybe it's this 511 day pack that's got, you know, 48 hours worth of capability in it. Uh, they call those 72 hour bags, they're not, unless you wear a size extra small and eat no food and drink no water. Um, then they're definitely a 72 hour bag. But if you're a bear sized man that eats food and drinks water, it's more 24 to 48 hours, okay? <clears throat> so depending on the mission, I will take any number of these things and put them together to make a system that makes sense for me based upon what I envision I will be dealing with. So that matters. You got to know what it is that you're actually doing. So that's why I am constantly encouraging you guys to actually go do the things, figure out what is the mission, what are you trying to accomplish and not just survive the zombie apocalypse, bro or bug out from here to there. Cool, how many miles is that? Have you done it? Have you actually walked it? Are your boots broken in? Do you have spare socks? What are you gonna do when you get calluses? How much water are you gonna use? You thought it was only three liters, but it turns out it's 96 degrees and 80% humidity, and you drank three liters in the first hour. Uh, do you have any oral rehydration salts? What are you gonna, blah, 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 blah. What's your combo solution? Who are you gonna meet? How are you gonna get there? Have you actually used your compass? Does it work? Can you use your, oh, you got steel plates on, and you're holding in your compass hero oh, that's an issue you should be holding it out here yada 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 you actually have to go use the things so that's kind of my philosophy on armor versus not armor and then really quickly um let's talk about some redundancy across the lines my line one uh edc i have pistol reloads two of them there's one there's another one Barnes, 185 grain plus P, jacketed hollow points. Or actually, they're solid copper, whatever. Um, so, I've got reloads. I've got a knife on my line one. I've got a lighter. I've got my pistol. I've got a tourniquet and a flashlight. I've got my wallet. Okay, that's my EDC. On my war belt... I've got a blowout kit, water, an E and E kit, uh, my pistol, two pistol reloads, two AR reloads, a multi tool, um, did I say water? Canteen, yeah. Oh, and a radio. Yep. Right there on line one. My line one combo for EDC is this cell phone that I'm talking at right now. So I've got Camo Ammo uh, Medical um, on both lines, you know, EDC or Line 1 War Belt, either or, it's there. Then when we get to Plate Carrier or Chest Rig, I've got Camo Water Ammo Medical on my Line 2. And I've also got Snacks, called a Sustainment Pouch on both of these, I mean, peanuts for the win. And that's basically a saw gunner pouch that's got like granola bars and peanuts in it and the whole nine. It's on my left side, which is my off hand. So as I'm walking, I can still keep one hand on my weapon and feed the machine if I need to, okay? Um, so I've got that on my line too. 
My line three, I've got more water, more ammo, more medical. I mean, there's a TQ right there. Uh, and different layers of combo because, let's see, you know, pace, primary, alternate, contingency, emergency. I've got my cell phone here. And I've got a ham radio on my war belt and I've got an encrypted two-way radio that runs on either my chest rig or my plate carrier and then I've got a CB in my rucks and so that gives me a wide diversity of options now and I'm telling you frankly these little ham radios are getting better and better and better and better uh, and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and so a lot of that capability can all be combined into one good ham radio I like the redundancy um, I like options. Options are good. And uh, depending on who you're operating with, having more than one radio can be good as long as they can talk to each other because now we can talk to each other. That's a nice thing. So all of our vehicles on property have two radios in them, ham radios. They're in the door pockets of each vehicle. And as an SOP, briefly, we have like a road hazard kit, you know, like jumper cables, um, blah, 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 air compressor, you know, a little 12 volt air compressor in each vehicle, then two ham radios and a good, like a level two trauma kit in each vehicle. Just cause, uh, and you'd be surprised how often we've made use of these things. So on my line three, my ruck, I've got a big knife, more water. I've got my shelter. I've got, uh, calories. I've got combat. Um, and I've got combo cover, cover, you know, whether that's spare socks or bug dope or a mosquito net or a wool hat or a sill tarp or a, um, wool blanket or whatever. That's kind of how I have my stuff set up. And all that layers on as your line gear so that let's say we're marching on a target and we're carrying our rucks and we get to where we're going. Um, okay, we can drop our packs, you know, say a quarter mile from where we need to insert, go in there, do the things, come back out, retrieve our packs, or they can go in a vehicle, or they can stay stationary, or whatever. And then I've still got on me all the things that I need to do the job. So, all that to say, I'm not constantly taking armor. These days, subject to change, if the balloon goes up and it turns into a war zone around here, I'll probably be taking armor on the regular, but the main reason that I don't take it is because of the weight. And um, if I can, I'm going to avoid situations where I need it to the best of my ability. And I say that just out of practicality because I've worn this armor a lot, a lot. And I really don't think it has not been my experience that the vast majority of people that own plate carriers and armor wear them regularly and have really done the mental math on what is it going to cost me in calories energy comfort maneuverability to wear this thing all the time and see that's the other thing firepower versus maneuverability right um i love level four plates i love being able to stop you know ap rifle rounds that's awesome but that 12 pounds can make the difference depending on what the mission is. And so you need to clearly understand what the mission is. And that's the crux of this entire talk is that there are instances where you definitely need armor and there are instances where you definitely don't. And you need to know the difference and prepare accordingly because that 12 pounds, if you're going, you know, whatever, you figure that out. That's up to you. But I wanted to relay my thoughts from my experience with my gear to y'all hopefully it'll give you something to think about uh, and i'm interested in your productive comments in the comments section so as always thank you for being here big thanks to the patrons for making this possible without them we would not be here i really really appreciate it and um go do the things go strap on your gear Figure out a mission plan. What are you actually doing? Shalom, y'all.